Hello. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this session. The following talk is called Quick, a simple job queue system for Python, present, presented by Liu Ta. Please join me in welcome speaker. OK, 大家好. Thank you for introducing me. My presentation title is Quick, a simple job queue system for Python. My name is Ryota Senager, also known as ASM Suechen. I'm a new grass software developer living in Tokyo, currently working for M3, the largest internet tech medical company in Japan. And technically, I like Markdown. I was a committer of a Markdown editor and the creator of a Markdown parser. Also, actually, I often use HackMD Anyway, unfortunately, I don't have opportunity to write Python in my work. Well, moreover, Alright, before I speak about programming things, let me share the background story of this system. It has a small story. Someday, when I was a master's student senior, my professor talked to me, hey, do you have free time these days? If so, could you please make entry or exit management system for our laboratory? Well, our university requests laboratories to track students' entrances because of the COVID-19 situation. And I, and I answered, yes, sir. Two days after this conversation, okay, it's done. The system status is all green. I did it. The system consists of Raspberry Pi, a card reader to scan a student card, its name is Pathway, and a tiny speaker to notice students that system is working. The entrance and the exit time is posted on our Slack channel and it's still working even after I graduate. Okay, the system was perfectly working for a few days, but some troubles were discovered. First, network connection problem. The connection was closed every few hours for some reason. So I thought I should use a job queue system to retry. But using Redis as a middleware is too much for other students. Well, so I created an easy one. I know this is not the best solution to solve these problems, but I did it. Okay, let me explain the overview of QWIC. At first, I should explain what I did. In brief, I developed a job queue system in Python as you know from my presentation title. And its concept is that very simple. Okay, so what is a job queue system? Probably most of the audience here knows what it is, though, please let me explain. This graph shows event flow among application, queue, and worker process. Application enqueues a job to queue and Q returns the response. After that, worker process obtains the, the job from Q. The main task of a job queue system is to delegate jobs to another process. Especially, it is used for jobs that take too much time and have to be executed asynchronously. For example, image processing, sending emails, uploading files, and something like this. As I have mentioned, QIC is a kind of job queue system. The main features that I'd like to stress is its simpleness. QIC is light and simple. QIC doesn't depend on other third-party libraries. It's made of only Python standard libraries. Thread-based programming is adopted to 
to realize parallel job execution. Also, the source code is published on my GitHub. Okay. This is a capture of QWIC demonstration. QWIC main process is working on the right pane. And the left pane, a script, example.py, that contains two jobs execute, executed. Then the right pane showed the arrival of two new jobs. Again, the right panel is QWIC. This is the example.py. There are two jobs in this. The first job is arrived, and the second job is a scheduled one. So after a few seconds, the second job is executed. OK. Basic features for a job queue system are implemented on QWIC. QWIC can run jobs asynchronously, of course, and run them periodically. Scheduling is also available. And finally, QWIC retries failed jobs every specified interval. By default, it's exponential backoff. And there are four main characteristics of QWIC. The first one is no Redis and no persistence. QWIC stores data only in memory. So actually, jobs are volatile. And the second one, QWIC is built only QWIC is built by only Python standard libraries. This also contributes to QWIC's simpleness. The third one is failed job retry when network available. This feature makes QWIC work on unstable environment. Finally, each job is executed on a thread. Let me introduce QWIC's interfaces. QWIC has three methods, NQ, NQ at, and QRAN. QWIC executes a job function by NQ method. And by NQ at method, a function can be executed at specified time like these lines. Periodical job execution it's also supported by Kura method with a scheduling time class. This class is designed for specifying interval. I implemented this interface based on RQ, an existing job queue system in Python. I already mentioned that QWIC is made of only standard libraries. This is a list of standard libraries used in QWIC, concurrent dot futures, multi processing, and SCED are especially fully utilized. The second topic is general job queue system. There are two general purposes to use a job queue system. The first is a synchronous job execution or background processing for a heavy task. The second, oops, the second is scheduling, like running function every one minute. Okay, and the next is a more realistic implementation. This is a base implementation of a job queue system. This Job manager class runs a Python function asynchronously until it succeeds. The right, the right script is a code that uses job manager. This job func is the main job function that only outputs hello. This example is only a combination of asynchronous execution and reply by using concurrent of futures. So there are some weak points. For example, this script is not thread safe. This means that threads can access to a single resource. So unexpected behavior may happen. Python has global interpreter lock. 
This feature prevents multiple threads working simultaneously. As the name describes that, Python has a global lock on threads. Bytecode execution on threads are run one by one. This means that CPU cannot utilize multi cores when Python multi-thread programming is used. Therefore, processing CPU bounded tasks are not suitable. As a side note, this feature works only in C Python. Other implementation like JSON, a JVM implementation of Python, don't have GIL. So it's obvious that some of you have this question. Why did you choose multi-thread instead of multi-processing? I knew there was a disadvantage using multi-thread programming for a job queue system in terms of parallelism. Although I aware of that, I chose multi-thread instead of multi-processing because the implementation concept was deadly simple. I thought multi-thread was simpler than multi-process. Also, I thought the main usage of QEQ was executing IO bounded procedures. Then, why do QEQ is needed? I just showed you a synchronous execution and scheduling is possible without any job queue systems. I think the best part of merit is abstraction. Thanks to the job queue system, we can be freed from multi-thread programming and queue management. The second reason is job management. Some job queue systems have a rich UI to manage jobs. To realize the purpose in the previous slide easily in Python, multi-thread programming with queue is one of the solutions like this code. This code implements very simple example to realize a job queue system. Also, scheduling is available if sleep time is changed. The red line part enqueues an argument to the queue. These lines, this for loop block, and the blue part executes the job func method that only echoes the argument in executor thread at line nine. This video, this video shows the scene when this code is executed. You see, it counts from one to 10. Joe Funk method is working with an argument from the for loop, one to 10. Okay, these are examples of existing JoQ system in Python, Celery, RQ, and Fuey. As you see the number of starts, Celery is the de facto standard, and the other job queues are also famous. I introduced in the previous slide, RQ is a job queue system available in Python. And RQ is a simple Python library that uses Redis. Also, Currently, it has approximately 8,000 stars on GitHub. Also, according to the GitHub readme, RQ is a simple Python library for enqueuing, for queuing jobs and processing them in the background with workers. Queuing implementation is affected by RQ because I like RQ's interface and its simpleness. As you can see, the interface of RQ is very simple. A job is executed by q.enq method. Moreover, enq at, moreover, enq at and enq in method are prepared other than enq method to support scheduled execution. This figure describes the architecture of RQ. A worker process and the scheduler process are working inside RQ. Each process executes a job from the queue by fork system call. 
the scheduler pulls every one second and runs jobs that are already past the starting time. Also, the scheduler is utilized to retry, and failed jobs will be scheduled some seconds later. For more information about RQ, you can refer to these links. OK, let's deep dive into QEIC architecture to understand it. A job in Q is stored as a dictionary, and each job has these attributes, function name, arguments with life lag, and so on. The worker needs to find the location at job. This can be realized by using import lib. This method used in QEIC imports a module dynamically from its name. This figure shows the architecture of QEIC. At first, an application enqueues a job to the job queue via TCP server. When the job queue receives a job event, it sends the job the worker process. If the job has to be run immediately, then a thread starts working. And if the job is specified a time to run, the worker process sends the job to the scheduler. Not only scheduled jobs, but also failed jobs are managed by this scheduler. Retry when network connection restores is a unique feature of QEIC. Network, sorry. Network connection of the machine is observed by another process. The process checks its network connection every one second and enqueues, and enqueues all failed jobs in failed job, failed job queue when the network state changes from disconnected to connect it. At first, application enqueues a job to QEIC job queue as same as the normal flow. And worker process runs the job at a thread. If we try on network available option, is set as true to the job. The job is slow to fail job queue when it fails. In the end, the network checker enqueues jobs in failed job queue when the machine returns to online. Finally, for this section, I'll explain how I tested QEIC. Of course, QEIC has unique tests, but testing for multi-thread programming is very difficult. So I used integration tests to assure the behavior of QEIC. OK, I should explain the way I implemented integration tests. I prepared a Docker image of QEIC. Executing a procedure of writing a line to a file as a task on QEIC, so that confirms if the file has a correct content. To describe it by this figure, inside the Docker container, two jobs are run. The one is writing one line A to a file. Another one is writing one line B to the same file. The integration test check if the check if the file has correct content with expected order. I know it's a tricky. I have enough time, so I'll show you a small live demonstration. Okay, but first I have to start QEIC. Oops, but QEIC that is not found. So install QEIC. Okay. And QEIC is working. For the second part, I have to create a job file, job.py. In this job, I want to output current time with an argument from date time import date time define job func with an argument 
print daytime.now with an argument. OK. That's all. And the second file is an application app.py. At first, I have to import QIC. And the next line is I have to import my job that I created before. OK. And, and I initialize the uh, in groups job to last. And in the end, just thank you it and to of groups with an argument icon Taiwan twenty twenty one. That's it for the next action. I have to run the application. Python app.py. Oops, something went wrong. Ooh, okay, I got it. Oops. And Q. Okay. The spell is difficult. I did it. The job, the job sent to QIC and the QIC and QIC output the, the current time and the argument. Okay. Also, I'm going to run a scheduled job from time in code time. You dot I I can use n nq at method with an argument and always is the same After five seconds, the the job is executed. Okay, it's quite simple, isn't it? In this demonstration, I showed you how simple QIC is. Let's go back to my presentation, All right? And at last, she had summary and conclusion. Let me share my experience during developing QIC. At first, I felt speed is justice in OSS development. If I developed QIC slowly, I guess I would not complete creating QIC. And Facebook has this slogan, done is better than perfect. I totally agree with this, but let me add one more phrase. Done is better than perfect, especially in individual development. There's no deadline and pressure on individual development. So developers should release as soon as possible because human being is lazy animal. Otherwise, the product will not be released forever. Intensive development until the first release is the key to better software. Also, publishing a blog entry and posting to Reddit are effective to reach first users. I wrote an entry on Dev.2 and I got some reaction on Reddit. Finding users are included in OSS activities, I believe. In this presentation, I introduced QWIC, a deadly simple job queue system for Python. A job works on a thread, and only Python standard libraries are used to develop QIC. However, real examples are too few, 
So more application examples are needed. In the end, the name of QIC comes from Q and Quick because the core of QIC was developed in two days. Yes, my developing speed was quick. Therefore, QIC. OK, that's it for my presentation. Thank you for listening. Ryota, mm -hmm. can you see the can you see the uh, the question on Slido? Yes, I can. So, oh, this one. So anonymous says, "What would you do if there is conflict between?" So, the conflict. Mm, what is the conflict? Uh, I know the meaning of the conflict, but so. I think the conflict means two jobs. So my answer is, mm, well, the I have a, a lock on a thread on um, thread. So if even if the jobs are access to one resource, it it's safe. Mm -hmm. 